Ooh, we got ghosts out here. Who's it gonna be? Who is it? It's Clara. It's the ghost of Clara. Where are you going now? Welcome back to the Rivers Ultimate Decades Challenge. And I actually remembered to turn my uh, audio on this time so I can actually record. So in the last episode of our Legacy Challenge, we lost Flora and we lost Clara. It was Flora's time to go, so that wasn't a really a shock to me, but I did not expect to lose Clara in childbirth. But we did lose her when she gave birth to our first son of Generation 3. So in the meantime, Wyatt II has hired our living nanny, Tamati Powie, <laughs> to help take care of our kids while he is working as a blacksmith. And I do think we should get Wyatt to remarried at some point, but I think instead of creating a life for him this time, like I did for the last generation, I kind of want him to meet someone organically, like out in the world somewhere and make that his new wife. So that's the plan. Also, thank you for waiting patiently between episodes. I know it's been like a week, but it's been quite a busy week for me. I went back to work full time. As I've said in the past, I'm a teacher and my school started school this week. So I've been really, really busy with that. And last night I got a freak allergic reaction and got hives all over my body. So I had to go get a shot in my butt. So that's also prevented me from recording. Thank you for waiting and being patient. I'm back. I still have hives, but here we are. We're also like real low in money right now because I had to replace their beds. Apparently, hmm. Apparently the high school years pack has caused major conflicts with custom content beds, which has been making a lot of last exceptions and other errors in the game so these aren't the most realistic but they're all i could afford of the beds that were not custom content so we're just gonna have to suck it up for right now until i can afford more realistic looking beds that are not, not custom content maybe i'll have the girls fish to get money it's not very traditionally feminine but we just we really don't care right now we're desperate for money we gotta keep this farm going oh he is so exhausted from work oh wait it's friday oh it's friday oh you're fine you're fine dude you gonna be fine you could just go to sleep early go to sleep we got the whole weekend to catch up on our chores. I was wondering why I was still getting last exceptions. It's because I forgot the toddler custom bed. Okay, I guess we'll just go with this one. Do we need to solve any more issues before I play this dumb game? So the death of our two adult females has been a major setback for us because Wyatt pretty much has to do all the chores right now. Like I said, the nanny's useless. Um, I will get him remarried, but... It's also been a financial setback because, sorry, I'm itching myself so hard right now. Give me one second <laughs> to finish that thought. Anyway, what I was saying was, it's also been like a, um, a financial slash lifestyle setback for us because I don't really have anybody to go foraging or hunting while Wyatt's away because when he's home, he, ha he has to like pretty much pick up the slack on the chores so he doesn't have time for all that. So we're back to eating only gruel for our meals so we're kind of although we have a, a a lovely homestead it's nothing like the first generation we we do kind of we are in a rough spot right now we're eating only gruel and we don't have a lot of money to spend and i'm a little nervous because i don't know when tax day is coming so we're kind of living in squalor also as you can see nobody has picked up the laundry for days <laughs> Uh, we need we need to find a wifey. I'm so itchy. I can't handle it. We could trade our chicken for money. Our old chicken. Yeah, this this chicken's old. We could trade it for money. Who the heck are you? Oh, it's the cat ear bread vendor guy, Sullivan Harmon. Should we befriend cat ear guy? So what's are we just accepting that he has cat ears, or should I take them off? Like, what is- I was just gonna ignore you, but now you're at my house, so I have to address you in some capacity. Well, I definitely don't think cat people would be accepted in society, um, but I also don't think people who wear fake cat ears would be accepted in society, much like today. So, <laughs> maybe we'll just have to take them off, but he's leaving now, so go live your kitty dreams. 
you furry. Okay, she's gonna sell the chicken for money. I wanna see how much money I get from him. He's right here. The rooster that I'm selling is right here. So what happens? Yes, I want to sell you, rooster. Oh, 150? That's not bad. Come on! Give me my money! What are you doing? You're clean. Oh, he's sleeping. He's taking a nap. Okay. Well, well, we'll come back to you later. He has a fear of unfulfilled dreams. Me too, homie. That hit way too close to home. Okay, discuss your fears. I want to see if it goes away. I want to watch it go away in real time. It did go away when I did when I fulfilled that. Okay, that's that's me. I haven't really like watched that in real time yet. I got hundred and eleven dollars from searching in my laundry. Have my children been keeping funds from me? Brown rooster freaking die before I could sell them. That sounds about that's that sounds about right. Yeah, that's my look. Imperia is going through a phase. She's found a spirit animal. Imperia will only want to wear her bear suit. Where did you get a purple bear suit, Imperia? I guess I could try to work this into my canon. I don't know. You're making it real hard for me, girl. You know what? Here's how we're gonna work that in. Imperia, obviously, sh she does not look like a purple bear, okay? She, that's not what she looks like. But in her mind, that's how she perceives herself. She sees herself as a giant purple bear. It's how she identifies at this point in her life, okay? She walks around and she growls at people. She's that kid, you know? So that's, that's how we're going to explain the purple bear, okay? I'm sorry to those of you who identify as bears who I may have offended in this video, but... Uh, She's kind of a weird kid, I won't lie. She has a fursona that she pretends to be. She walks around growling at people. Obviously to them, she just looks like regular Imperia, but in her mind, she's a ferocious bear. And sometimes uh, her family catches her walking on all fours out in the garden. Maybe we'll actually go out and find you a honey tomorrow. And Imperia can get her honey too, since she is a bear. Unbearable sadness. Imperia longs to be in her bear form. She wants to become friends with Gil. Um, I'm gonna tell you something right now, Joan. It's probably not gonna happen. Someone in the comments actually suggested that we should start a family rivalry between the Rivers and the Sosas now because Gil has perceived that the Rivers family has taken both his father and his sister from him now. And I think that's kind of a genius idea, so... I think I'm gonna have Gil get married, have kids, and we'll have like a family rivalry that lasts generations to come. Oh, there's a hot lady at our door. Stop what you're doing. Friendly introduction. Oh wait, we can do polite introduction? That's special, let's do that. Um, well, she's a potential suitor. I don't know, what do we think? Let me give her a makeover. Maybe that'll change your mind. She's older than him, but that doesn't matter. I can't stop itching. Everything hurt. I'm thinking maybe she came to his house because she's like a traveling merchant. And I could give her like a little traveling merchant outfit with a little pouch. Maybe she's like a traveling herbalist. That'd be interesting. She comes to his house and she's like, I heard that you've lost people very dear to you recently. I have an herb that can take the pain away. And it's just weed. Yup, that's canon now. Here we have our medieval pot dealer. Selena. He's not very flirt. He's unflirty, so it just could go either way. Oh, she didn't like it. I'm flattered, but I'm not interested in that type of relationship with you. Mm -hmm. Romance? No one. Oh, she's asexual. I didn't know that that was a thing in this game now. Okay. What if we got married? Hear me out. What if we still got married, even though she's asexual? But we did it for, like, mutual benefit. Like, I get married to have a helping hand around the house. You get married so nobody treats you like a social pariah. And you get a house to live in. Mutually beneficial relationship? Question mark? I don't know. Can you tell I'm desperate for a helping hand? Can you tell? Oh! Hey! She's... Bruh! Okay, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe we won't. Uh, she just smashed my dollhouse. I changed my mind anyway. I need a woman that I can actually procreate with, or this is all for nothing. Well, I'm gonna have him go out and look around and meet people, okay? What about the bartender? She's an adult. Kendra Aranda. 
Right, well, let's uh, eat our cottage pie and chat her up, shall we? <laughs> Polite introduction. So we've got the bartender. Okay, who else is here? Um, who are you? Randy Poole. Got the bartender, Randy Poole. We've got Katrina Foley. Should we chat them all up or should we just pick one and just and just throw ourselves full force into it? Emily Dobson. Yeah, okay. We've got four ladies to check out. Nice to meet you. Why did you go around the bar? That's a little weird. You could have just talked to her from there. She's trying to work. Maybe we should back off. Okay. Let's talk. Let's go upstairs and talk to this chick. Um, because I feel bad that um I pulled her away from the bar because now nobody can order anything. This is Katrina Foley. Oh, they're both going down to order drinks. I think she asked him to get a drink. Katrina Foley thinks Wyatt too is swell and wants to become best friends? I just met you, of course. Well, I guess we're marrying Katrina. Good time to give her a makeover. Ask to be woo partners? What is going on in this new pack? We got a lot of work to do on you, girly. We're not gonna ask why she was at the bar by herself, unattended by a man, because that's pretty scandalous in itself. Oh my god, that looks like blood splattered. Mm. What in the Macbeth? Okay, here's our new Katrina. Well, it put us back at home, so we'll just bring Wyatt home. We met a girl to pursue, so that's good enough for me. Crying because she's not in bear form. Girl, just change into bear form then. I don't care. Live your dream. Jeez. I'm gonna have him get up early and age up Wyatt the third because he has to go to work today and I, I need it to be done. All right, what's our trait? Charmer! Okay, so we do have to roll here. Um, remember, rolls for toddlers to survive their age up transition. Four, eight, and 12. All right, here we go. Survived, yay! I knew he would. This is Wyatt the third before, and this is him after. Meanwhile, in an abandoned barn off the coast of France, we find the Vittoris have taken shelter. When they caught wind that they were being hunted back in England, they fled, leaving behind their farm and all the chickens. And sadly, in the move, our baby dog Sam passed away. You can also see that Alice is with child and is due to give birth any time now. So they're eagerly awaiting that in the comfort of their... <laughs> Abandoned barn. Holy what the Vittoris God. also oh. left behind when they left England? Oh, All of their lame. money. So they've got to start over a whole new life here in France. But Edward's happy just to be with his loved ones. Away from the trauma of his past. Good job, Eddie. You did it. You're a Frenchman now. Oh, spooky. And then late at night at the end of 1361, Alice gives birth to twin girls, Mary Magdalene and Mary Ann. And unfortunately, Mary Ann does not survive her role, but Mary Magdalene does. So they have a lovely little girl out here sleeping in a bale of hay. <laughs> and that is going to bring us to the end of 1361. Thank you for watching once again, and I'll see you next year. Bye.